But joining us now is psychologist Phyllis Chesler, the author of An American Bride in Kabul, who may have some insight into why the girls were kidnapped. That's right, J.D. The book describes how she was held prisoner in the early 1960s as a young bride in Afghanistan. Phyllis spent five months in the Muslim country and almost died before she managed to escape and annul her ill-fated marriage. Phyllis, welcome to America's Forum. A pleasure to be with you. We appreciate you Skyping in. Phyllis, you know the situation. More than 200 schoolgirls being held captive in Nigeria by Boko Haram. Why do you think these girls were targeted? Okay, this is the face of jihad. This is historical Islam for 14 centuries. This is the history of uh, Islam in Nigeria and in Africa. There is nothing new at what we're looking at. You do a raid, you kill the men, you divide up the property, you take the girls, you, you forcibly convert them to Islam and either, quote, marry them or sell them into sex slavery. What's new is that now the entire world, because of technology, is all looking at it. We're not looking at something that's new. It's just that we're being given a global peek at something that is very ancient historically. That's the first point. The second point is these girls may indeed have been mutilated genitally because they do that in Nigeria and in Africa, both Christians and Muslims. And the idea of their being raped or gang raped is reprehensible because of the pain and trauma that it will cause. And I've been writing about this, thinking about this. Uh, I, yes. Sorry, ahead. Phyllis. What intentions do you think that these militants have uh, for the girls? Do you think that they will free them eventually? Well, you know, I have a feeling that they meant to sell them because they view them as their property. They captured them and their booty. I think because of the world attention that maybe they changed their minds. This is just my hunch. And now they think, okay, well, they want them back this badly. The whole world is on us. Let's get something for it. They have to be worth something. Um, that's just my, my gut hunch because otherwise they would not, their plan was not to trade them. Phyllis, you have joined us before to talk about your book, and, and as you give us the historical and, dare we call them, cultural perspectives on uh, the Islamic world and the treatment of women by, by some of these groups, based on your own experience in, in Kabul, what do you think is going through the minds of these young women right now, kidnapped as they were with the specter of being sold into a sex slavery? What a good question. They may feel abandoned. They may feel defeated. They may feel alone. They may not know that the whole world in one voice is concerned about their fate. They may have already been raped and forcibly married and shamed. And therefore, as a psychologist, uh, I could say that they're going to have serious post-traumatic stress symptomatology. So what's going, what went through my mind ultimately was that I had to free myself, that nobody was going to free me. In my case, they took away my American passport and nobody would allow me out. And an American bride in Kabul tells one woman's story, my own, but then I join many other women's stories uh, to my own. Willis, what are your thoughts on this current social media campaign, um, the hashtag Bring Back Our Girls? I think it's pointless. I think it makes those who do it feel righteously better about themselves, and maybe that's a little progress. I think that what Senator John McCain said is more to the point, that as a humanitarian effort, and indeed European countries, and now America, and Israel, of course, are on the ground, and the only way to have responded, and I, I think it's diplomatically difficult because the government is corrupt and it's also a failed state. Both things are true. So can we just go in there and do the right thing across another person's sovereign territory? I'm not sure. But by now, uh, I don't know how effective we're going to be with all of our advanced technology. It's in a terrible sense like the Malaysian plane that disappeared. I mean, the girls are somewhere there. 
apparently one third of them have been identified from that video that was released by their parents. But the two thirds might have been sold already, might be somewhere else, might be dead, God forbid. So each day that goes by, it is less likely to find them, although now there's this new possibility of trading them. Well, Phyllis, let me let me follow up on a related issue. Given your background in psychology, we touched on it just a second ago, Francesca, with the question about hashtag bring our girls back. For lack of a better term, we might call it the mass psychology of social media, the uh, the the catharsis of people holding up signs proclaiming their outrage or concern uh, as, as we have seen. Uh, people start to text rather than speak face to face. Is this a new uh, mass manifestation of uh, a disconnect in terms of face to face or actual an actual act uh, in favor of some sort of uh, social symbolism? I think it's both. I think people rely on symbolism because there's no risk and they feel good about themselves and they've done something, but it's not effective. Perhaps because we're not real, we're not all starring in a video. We love the world, bring the girls back. This is a military operation that needs to be undertaken. Jihad is a military holy war, and that war has been declared against these girls, and for that matter, against the West and against Western values. Boko Haram means either uh, Western learning education is forbidden or sinful, or that the colonialists have tricked us and we can't have anything to do with them. Oddly and ironically, the British outlawed slave trade in Africa, from Africa, but the Africans in, what, in Nigeria and elsewhere continued enslaving each other and selling other black Africans. It's something that is amazing that more Americans and more people of African descent who are now in the Americas and in Europe seem not to understand about Islam. Slavery is religiously sanctioned. It's all right. Phyllis, we appreciate your input, and obviously you draw on personal experience. The name of the book again, An American Bride in Kabul, and your insights and analysis of this current situation when, uh, again, reliving your own situation, as painful as that has been, uh, we very much appreciate your time, oh. Phyllis Chesler. Thank you very, very much. Thank you both. And Francesca, we thank you for your uh, you, contribution to this discussion. Uh, your take on this, John McCain says, special forces should go in as heart-wrenching, as gut-wrenching as this is. Is this something American servicemen should be involved in? Why don't you tweet us your thoughts at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum, there's also email, connect at NewsmaxTV.com, or you can visit us at Facebook, facebook.com backslash Newsmax. We're coming right back with more. Please stay tuned.